Right, I'm going. No, wait. It didn't make me feel anything. Liam, welcome. This is the um, take three tonight. Pleasure. Take three. Okay, um, welcome. Liam, you've just finished making a feature film yeah, well. um, called Dear Hangman. So... We're going to fire off some questions and awesome. get, some, uh, get some truthful answers off you about it. Yeah. So question number one, uh, Dear Hangman, it's a film about what? Do tell. Am I allowed to swear? Um, well, I've got a bleep button. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, so Dear Hangman is, I'd best describe it, a love note to the original film, everything that worked with the original film, that is, and a uh, big off to anything that didn't really okay, so we start off with I won't give too much away we start off with the hangman in mm -hmm. in custody he's um, he's been uh, captured by yeah. the, the main protagonist and he's basically in prison um, obviously he's desperate for Bishop's approval who's played by Vicky uh, Adebola she's Awesome. Um, yeah, she's really good, isn't she? She's really good. Yeah. He's, he's desperate for that approval from this uh, police detective that was clever enough to capture him, who he's been courting through, you know, his time, really, basically hanging these people and stuff. So um, he's after her approval. Mm -hmm. She's after closure. And for both of that to happen, they've got to meet one final time. Sure. So sure. uh, yeah, drunken wink. Uh, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> okay. Question yeah, two. I'm going to lose these glasses. I have to wear glasses all day. I hate wearing glasses. There's a fantastic cast and crew in this film. How do you go about that process? Uh, crew's pretty easy. I, uh, you know, just networking of people that, uh, they're reliable. Pretty much trustworthy. You know, they're trustworthy. They're good at their jobs, yeah. and it's hard to find that. Really, isn't it? Uh, mm. So we, well, I make sure I'm surrounded by the best people for the job. Really, cast wise as well. Like, um, uh, I'm not a big fan of putting out casting calls for people. No. Uh, so when we came to make this film, uh, there was other projects we'd worked on previously with actresses, actors. You know, worked with Ben for a few films now. Uh, Vicky. Fantastic. Yeah. I think I've said that twice now. Yeah. I can't remember which whether it's on this tape or another. <laughs> <laughs> or the other four. <laughs> she did make me chuckle when she got the giggles, because once she got the giggles, that was it. It was game over. Oh wasn't yeah, it? she's just she's just fantastic. She <laughs> but yeah, it was um it boils it boils down to people that share your vision really. Yeah, and, and I think that's a nice thing about indie it, film yeah. in you know, when you're in a local indie film network is the fact that you've got those people, you've got the cool two people to go to really yeah. for it. And yeah, you definitely. you know, people that you can trust. So yeah. Definitely. yeah. No, I totally get that. Okay, so what is the standout part of Dear Hangman that you're most proud about? I feel like, um, I'm, I think I'm proud of all of it, to be honest, where that comes from um, writing the, the script with Matt, producing with my partner Lisa, um, you know, the casting side of it, the pre-production, you know, Lisa source and everything, the locations, the props, you know. Mm. Um, uh, the crew. The, it's 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 difficult, dude, because there's there's so much work that went into it. And yeah, it's yeah. Sort of yeah. like it's always a proud awesome. moment when you finish a project as well, isn't it? When you finish that production. Yeah, that it's... last that last day of filming. You know, yeah. trying to actually thank everyone. <laughs> it was it was difficult, not because I'm a absolute twat, but um, finding the right things to say as well, especially, and worse of all, the, there was a camera pointed at me face when I was saying it, so it was about half an hour of wasted material, really, so that was quite fun uh, <laughs> to delete straight off the computer when I put it in, but yeah, it was, yeah. I suppose we've got to talk about it, COVID-19, it yeah, kind well, of totally disrupted the whole entertainment industry for the best part of two years. Did yeah. it Did it affect 
your production it stopped me showing it for the last two years but um we were we were very close to completing before everything had to shut down anyway in uh, march of 2020 weren't it yeah. so we had to probably wait about four months till restrictions are lifted and then we managed to uh get the two very pivotal important locations yeah uh, to finish the film i must say i've seen some of the some of the film i yeah. haven't seen it all yeah um but the locations you've secured are, are pretty pretty decent locations too yeah that was you've down, done really well there yeah that was down to lisa uh just being a, a very good producer uh yeah. and yeah anything i needed i did have to sort of chase her up with it she basically went i know this place how about this how about this and yeah it made my life a hundred percent definitely i can imagine easier because yeah. you're not worrying about that going into filming you can focus on what your strengths are and leave the uh, cast to do what they do best really so all right well done lisa <laughs> well done yeah everyone <laughs> Okay, so you co-wrote, directed, shot, and edited this film. That's yeah. quite a lot of credits. What's your favourite part of filmmaking? I'd say that the the filmmaking side of it. I'm not wouldn't say a hands-on director. Like I don't really like use, using that word director anyway. But uh, my main strengths are making film. You know, mm. like uh, shooting, lighting, directing. A lot of things you do. That's that's filmmaking, really. Yes. Uh, directors like that sort of, you know, they direct the cast, you know, all that sort of stuff. But it, filmmaking, they direct the the overall production, mm. if that makes mm. sense, sort of thing. So that's mainly what I like doing. Uh, yeah. And it was, yeah, everything in, in the whole production, it went smoother. I I mostly, it, yeah, anyway. it is quite nice when you do get involved in the camera work, the editing, and you know, so you get to see different elements of it. Unless, of course, if your auto focus button goes on, uh, quite possibly. So. <laughs> 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 it's normally easy to monitor a camera I've, behind I've, the camera. I've, I've, <laughs> I've seen worse, but yeah, yeah. that is good. One. All right, so talking about kit. Um, a lot of people that are watching or listening to yeah. this podcast stroke interview will yeah. be filmmakers themselves. Yeah. Um, let's get a little bit geeky here. Okay, what I'll was the to. film made on? Uh, shot on Black Magic. So I think we had either three or four, not all at once, but there were there was a five camera setup at one point. Uh, but yeah, it's I think it was usually like two or three we shot with Black Magic. Uh, there'd be a pocket occasionally, or a, you know a Black Magic. Uh, 4K or mm. your GH4. So all the trusty GH4. Yeah, yeah. Some, yeah. yeah. Uh, sometimes made. <laughs> some, yeah, sometimes made a, a, a cheeky cameo into a few scenes. So that was good. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed uh, that. Yeah, nice little camera with the uh, gimbal on it as well. Made yes. some nice yeah. uh, steady cam shots actually. Now that the film is finished, this is a big question, by the way, Liam. Yeah, I do. What's the next stage for it? Because we all know that, well, people that are involved in filmmaking, they know that it's hard to make a film, but the work comes after. So how do you intend to get this film out there? Uh, well, I'm sort of, yeah, the old the old indie way, I suppose. Uh, we like to show them local picture houses and stuff, local cinemas, theatres and stuff. And obviously the first one will be the 19th of this month, the Talisman mm -hmm. Theatre in Kenilworth, uh, Warwickshire. That's the Talisman Theatre in Kenilworth, the 19th. Yep, that's This it. month, that's it. be there, make it, go yeah, and watch it. Yeah, get get some eyes on it really, because that's, that's the only way stuff like this... Gets out there? Yeah, yeah. gets out there. Of course it does, dude. You know, uh, you've got, got to get eyes on it. You've got to get... Good publicity on it. You got to get shit publicity. Any publicity is good, really. Yeah, means you've yeah. you know spent some time, you know, vetted some interest in actually watching it. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's the that's the that's the first stage. Next stage, obviously, distribution's always good. Mm. Yeah, uh, we we'll we'll see on that because obviously I want to test the the festival side of things as well. Sure. Some local sure. uh, good festivals out there which you don't have to pay for. Mm -hmm. You know they don't take your money for some laurels and <laughs> stuff. You know it's you it's know, a bit of artwork. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. So yeah. Um, and obviously the next the next thing yeah like I said like I just said the distribution thing will be good but obviously we need 
someone to come and take it off my hands where they've got the same passion, interest. I was in, going to say, in, it's got to be the yeah. right distributor, hasn't it? Yeah, do you know any? No, oh, I wish I did. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if Liam Thomas Burke was to remake a blockbuster Hollywood film yeah, or any kind of blockbuster film, yeah. um, what film would it be, why, and what would you do different? Uh, uh, I remember I was joking around with Ben that we should go and make uh, Highlander. Uh, like a, a, I could see him in that. Yeah, yeah. But I think Henry Cavill's beat him to it, I think. So, uh, um, he's getting around a bit these days, yeah, isn't he? Slag. Uh, <laughs> no, he's, he's he's one of them underrated people, a lot like yeah. Samuel Jackson and, you know, there's yeah. a few others up there that just, like, they're just good. Mm. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, but... Um, nice guy, too. Is he? Do yeah, you know he suppose seems nice. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I yeah. suppose he's got to come across nice in public, but I he suppose, seems a pretty genuine yeah. kind of guy. Yeah, so, who, Ben or... Um... Uh, Henry. Oh, okay, not Ben then. Oh, Ben's all right yeah, as well, you know. he's great. You know, he's, <laughs> no, Ben sounds. Ben, yeah, he's such, a nice, he's such a nice guy. He reminds me of a golden retriever, Ben. Does. So, yeah, we were thinking of that would be a good idea. Uh, you know, we'd probably, if we, you know, obviously not going to do it now, obviously, but uh, it would probably have to be something like... Uh, They've, these immortals have to be sort of vampiric and stuff. I suppose it's sort of come across that way in the original if, you know, like the, the quickening sort of keep it up mm. alive or whatever, but it would have to be something like that where they have no choice sort of thing. They have to they have to kill or if they walk away, they maybe, maybe they should die still, maybe. Maybe it gives it more of a sort of there's more stakes then, I suppose. There's always been something that bugged us about uh, the original, obviously. Uh, you know, who am I to actually question it? Because it was, you know, cool classics like that. But um, there's, you know, I think it was Sean Connery was saying to Christopher Lambert about it. It was something like if um, the Kurgan, Clancy Brown's character would, uh, if he'd, you know, been the last person on the planet he'd become human and then the whole world would suffer in darkness well that'd be the perfect time to kill him surely so <laughs> it's oh does does mcleod sacrifice himself for that very moment i don't know it's yeah stuff like that really but um i think i wouldn't well remakes i don't, I don't know i'm not too sure i think it would have to be my own sort of Film. Obviously, there's computer game wise. I don't think there's been mm, okay. any game that's been given the justice. Maybe possibly Mortal Kombat, maybe the first one, yeah. uh, the 95 one, and possibly one of the two Raiders, maybe. But um, we definitely would have to sort of look at Streets of Rage. That's Streets of Rage 2, actually. That's probably like that sort of. That's an interesting that idea. Is, that is a very good game. Uh, and it probably would make a very good film if I could ever find the screenplay, which is probably still at my parents' house somewhere. But uh, uh, so it's one to watch out for. Oh god, get, yeah, just give us about fifty grand. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll get Ben back and some other people with it. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, what advice would you dish out to anybody that's about to start making their first feature film? Um, manage your expectations. Um, and I'd say probably record them rehearsals. Yeah. Good shell. Yeah, definitely that yeah. I've found on many occasions that by hit and record, not telling the, the actors that you're recording, yeah, yeah. that sometimes you nail it in that rehearsal. I think so. There's a lot of things that as soon as you see it, it's very difficult it's very difficult to tell an actor that, you know, remember that thing you just done? No, what did I do? Yeah. Because subconsciously yeah. they're not thinking about that, it, no. and and acting's a lot of reacting to what's going on as well. Mm. Mm. So if you have a, you know, that that could be the the difference that makes the scene, yeah, sort of thing. So yeah, it's definitely record them. That's a good record, bit of advice. Yeah, record the yeah. rehearsal. Yeah, definitely that. Yeah. Well, Liam, pleasure, man. Best of luck with the film. Yeah, you can't too, wait fella. to see it. Yeah, and um, oh, it's empty. It's empty. It's yeah. time for another one. All cool, right, man. Let's, Let's do it. Go. 
Because I'm not a cold-blooded killer. I'm sure six of your victims would disagree with that. They deserved everything that happened. Because you said so. Yes. They were bad people. Bad people who had families? Do you think they were bad people? What? Excuse me. Have I ever told you how sorry I am? 